Hey, Omnibus Collectors, it's Riley, and I'm back for another episode of The Comic Commuter, where I talk about comics on my way to or from work. Uh, so yesterday's episode was the first in a series of episodes about the current uh, state of the DC comics, and uh, I talked about their upcoming Hanna-Barbera Beyond line, which was reimagining a lot of the classic Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters like Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones into new comic series by uh, current industry uh, professionals and top artists, you know, redesigning the characters and stuff like that. And today I wanted to talk about another new line that they're starting, uh, which is called Young Animal. It's going to be a new imprint of a uh, series that are going to be set in main continuity as far as I've seen. Um, but they're going to be intended for mature readers. Uh, <clears throat> so the that line, Young Animal, there's going to be four books uh, starting the line, and it's also going to be uh, run by Gerard Way, the frontman, or former frontman of My Chemical Romance, who is known in comics for writing uh, the two volumes of Umbrella Academy. The third one should be coming out in the future, but there's no word yet on that. Um, True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys, which was a uh, comic adaptation of the story from their last album. Uh, he also did some other comics, I think earlier than Umbrella Academy, some other weird comics that didn't get much publication. And then he did uh, one of the, the issues of Edge, Edge of Spider-Verse over at Marvel. Um, so Way's done a lot of stuff in comics, and he's known especially for Umbrella Academy, which I really love personally. I thought it was, both of those miniseries were fantastic. The characters were just a lot of fun. And it was a really nice mix of Doom Patrol and the X-Men, um, giving us a really weird series with kids with strange powers growing up into adults with strange powers and stuff like that. So, I don't know, I, I could talk for hours about that series, about how much I loved it all that, but this is about Young Animal. So, Way is now running Young Animal. Like I said, it's an imprint. It's going to have four different books. Uh, he's writing the headlining book, and he's co-writing, I believe, two of the other four books that are starting up um, the, the launch titles for Young Animal. So, Way himself is going to be writing, no surprise here, Doom Patrol, uh, and he's going to bring along with him the artist uh, Nick Darrington, which he said that he saw some uh, a picture of Cliff Steele, Robot Man, by Darrington, and thought that his style worked perfectly for the series. So, uh, so he's bringing him along as the artist. He actually had the idea for a run on Doom Patrol a while ago. Uh, he was supposed to do it with art by Becky Cloonan, and I guess it was supposed to be part of the New 52 or something around there during those years. Um, but it never happened, so now he's finally getting to do that. But Becky Cloonan is not going to be attached as the artist, unfortunately. She will be attached uh, to the covers of the series, if I recall correctly. And I believe she's responsible for the um, design of a lot of the characters in there. Uh, he's going to be utilizing a lot of the mainstay characters, but he's also going to bring forth, it looks like, a couple characters from Grant Morrison's run, including Danny the Street and Flex Mentallo. And on top of all that... Uh, he's going to be creating some new characters for the run as well. So I'm really looking forward to that one. I'm a big fan of Doom Patrol. Given that I'm a huge X-Men fan, you can see the X behind me. Um, I also enjoy Doom Patrol, but in a very different way. And, and mostly what I enjoy was Morrison's run because of just how freaking weird he was able to make it. Um, Morrison just went completely out there and it totally worked. And it was one of his earlier books, so it's like you know, this is, this works, it's Doom Patrol, it's weird, it's these weird characters doing weird things, fighting weird villains, and I know I've, I've talked about Doom Patrol, I made another video, I want to say like probably two years ago, after the Omnibus came out, I made a video about that one, so if you want to know more about his Doom Patrol, uh, go back and read that, if you want to read more by uh, Gerard Way, I definitely recommend Umbrella Academy if you haven't read it already. Anyway, uh, the next title that they're doing uh, for Young Animal, this one is co-written by uh, Gerard, called Shade the Changing Girl. Obviously, this is based off of Shade the Changing Man, uh, the most popular run of which was under Peter Milligan with uh, Brendan McCarthy. 
which I think they published like three, two or three paperback collections from that run a while ago, like several years ago, and they never finished. It was actually a pretty expansive run on the character. Um, so it's a, it's a run that I was really, really intrigued by because Brendan McCarthy is an insane artist and especially Peter Milligan back during that time was really, that was during his heyday as a writer and I would love to see their Shade the Changing Man and with this I'm, I'm hoping that with the publication of this Shade the Changing Girl comic that it leads to DC deciding to reprint the Changing Man uh, series somewhere, somehow in paperbacks. It's, it's, you know, I know a lot of people have been, uh, hoping for that for a long time. So it's, it's something that, uh, is definitely, definitely something that's wanted. It's just something that DC needs to put some focus on. But anyway, it's written by, uh, Cecil Castellucci, uh, with art by Marley Zacone. Zarcone. I, I can't, I wrote down the names myself uh, just so I wouldn't forget because they're all a lot of these are, are, are names that are new to me, uh, so I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, Cecil Castellucci or Cecil Castellucci, she wrote for the Star Wars Moving Target uh, book. She's also done a little bit of work in comics. She wrote uh, a book called Plain Janes for DC when they were doing their Minx line, which was supposed to be like a, a young adult reader line, and then there was a sequel to that one. So she's done a little bit of work in comics before, but um, yeah, Gerard's going to be co-writing this one with her, and I think uh, Becky Cloonan is also on covers for this one. So should be pretty interesting stuff to see. Uh, I don't have much more to say about that one. Uh, but the next one that I've got is Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye. Cave Carson is a classic like Silver Age kind of an adventure character. So they're kind of uh, rebooting him or, you know, bringing him back out of the darkness into the light into a new series. Uh, co-written, again, Gerard Way is co-writing this one. And uh, that's going to be with John Rivera. I tried to look up John Rivera. I can't find any information on him because I guess there's like a soccer player that has the same name as him or a footballer that has the same name as him. So all I could find was information about that guy and I couldn't find anything about the writers. So I don't know what he's done in the past uh, to say anything about him, but I know it has art by uh, Michael Avon uh, Emming, who of course is well known for his work on powers and he's done a lot of other stuff in comics. So that one should be pretty intriguing. Uh, you know, just classic adventurer, uh, with kind of new adventures to it, a new, new tone to the series than what was there in the silver age, just reinventing a classic character that hasn't been used for forever. So pretty intriguing. Um, I don't, I haven't read much about what the story is going to be on that one, but it's got a good artist to it. I'm definitely going to check that one out. And, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm at least intrigued by it. I'm intrigued enough to want to know more. But anyway, moving on the last one and the one that's actually the most curious to me is, uh, Mother Panic. So Mother Panic is focusing on a new character. At least I'm assuming it's a new character set in Gotham City. And she's going to be, uh, going against the high society like the underground of the high society of Gotham. So I, I think that this is a new character. The artwork by uh, Tommy Lee Edwards that I've seen looks phenomenal. And it's written uh, by uh, Jody Hauser. And Jody Hauser, I, I looked her up because I thought her name sounded familiar. And she has written a lot of stuff for comics in recent years. Um, And it's, I think it's being co-written by uh, Gerard Way as well. But Jody Hauser, the, the main thing that I think she's been known for recently was she wrote the Faith miniseries over at Valiant Comics, which got a lot of positive attention. Uh, so that's really good for her, for her track record. Uh, she did, did a lot of other stuff, uh, a few smaller stories over at Marvel. You know, she wrote for the anthology, the Vertigo CMYK. So she's done some work over at DC as well. Um, so I, I think she's going to do a really good job on this one. And it's just, uh, this is the series that really 
puts it into perspective that this young animal stuff is supposed to be set in DC continuity uh, because it's like, well, this, this chick is in Gotham. She's going to be investigating some stuff out there. So I think this is going to be a really interesting one. The artwork looks phenomenal. Uh, we got a couple of, uh, good writers on there as well, but the idea behind it, just bringing out a new character in Gotham, uh, exploring some unturned rocks over in, in, you know, Gotham City, it's going to be a really interesting idea. So those are the four books that are coming out from Young Animal. Uh, Gerard Way, mostly responsible for everything. Um, so this is going to be a really interesting turn for him because mostly he's, you know, making music and stuff. Uh, he's done a little bit in comics before, but now he's being given an entire imprint of DC Comics to just kind of do whatever he wants to do. Um, and it looks like he has free, uh, just creative freedom completely to do what he wants to do because it is a mature reader imprint, so he doesn't have to worry about, you know, scaling it back uh, for, you know, mainstream comics or anything. And he gets to use these, you know, whatever characters that he wants that hasn't been, that haven't been used for a long time. So it's going to be a really interesting imprint. Um, and kind of the way that I'm looking at this is it, it kind of looks like... Um, the way that Vertigo was when it first started. When Vertigo first started and it was more like in continuity titles like Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol, Animal Man, uh, Sandman even was originally part of continuity and then they did the Sandman Mystery Theater with the, uh, the classic version of the character. Um, Shade the Changing Man, a lot of these books they were in DC continuity using DC characters that had been long forgotten or had just, you know, not been used in a little while, not been used uh, to their fullest extent, I don't know, whatever. But these characters are, got revived, revamped in a new light, in a more mature light, and for a lot of these characters, it actually worked a lot better for them. For Swamp Thing, for Animal Man, uh, this setting, this more mature setting, worked a lot better for those characters. So it's a similar idea to what they were doing with the... Uh, original Vertigo launch. And then of course Vertigo went on and it became a lot different and there was uh, stories that were just out of continuity. Hellblazer, which started in continuity, went completely off the rails and went out of continuity and now they've got Constantine uh, in the New 52 and stuff is now part of continuity, but like the original Hellblazer book is not looked at as if it was part of continuity. Um, so they, they just went off and, and went out of continuity. They, I, I've said continuity enough times that it sounds weird. Um, but they went in and started their own thing. All the books were in their own uh, their own universes. So like Preacher and Transmetropolitan and Fables are not connected uh, at all. Everything's separate. And I'm hoping that that doesn't happen with Young Animal. I'm hoping that Young Animal is an idea that kind of sticks around. Even if Gerard Way isn't involved for the entirety of its life, I'm hoping that Young Animal is something that sticks around because having a mature reader imprint that's part of DC's uh, established universe is a really cool idea. And I'm really surprised that, that DC uh, came up with this kind of out of the blue. It just showed up, this idea for, for this Young Animal imprint. Um, and I'm hoping they stick with it because it's a really cool idea. I really enjoy it. Um, I have high hopes for this. I cannot wait to read these books. Anyway, I'm going to have to wrap this one up because uh, there's a time limit on these videos I make on my phone. But uh, tomorrow morning's video, I'm going to be talking about Vertigo and hopefully wrap this entire DC uh, talk up by talking about Rebirth as well and some of the stuff that's going on over at DC. Uh, and the reason I wanted to start talking about DC Comics as a company is because while there are a couple of cool things, the Hanna-Barbera and the Young Animal stuff that's going on, there's a lot of really negative things going on with the publisher as well that I kind of want to talk about and give my perspective and my thoughts on that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please join me tomorrow as I talk more about DC Comics. Uh, check out links down below for my site, my page, and all that stuff. And I hope you guys have a great day. See you later.